Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a nice radical equation. We have the square root of 13 minus x equals 13 minus x squared. And we're going to be solving for x values. We're also going to be looking at the graph of two functions, if I don't forget. So let's get started. First of all, I want to solve this problem by squaring both sides. Because we can do that. With radical equations, that's pretty typical. We want to get rid of all the radicals and just turn this into a polynomial equation. Because we know how to solve polynomial equations, right? Sometimes. All right, let's find out. The left-hand side is going to be 13 minus x, and the right-hand side is going to be 169 plus x to the fourth power minus 26x squared. If you use the formula for a minus b quantity squared. I hope you know that. Now let's go ahead and put everything on the same side with x to the fourth, uh, where it's positive, so like the right-hand side. So that'll be x to the fourth minus 26x squared plus x. And now we're going to bring the 13 over, so it's going to be minus uh, 169 minus 13. That's going to be 156, and the whole thing will be equal to 0. Okay, so far so good. Now this is a quartic equation, but guess what? It's a depressed one. There is no x cubed, so that's good. We can go ahead and actually do the following. Let's leave these two terms on the left and everything else on the right hand side. Now we're going to go ahead and add something to both sides to turn this into a perfect square. We actually, we already had a perfect square, but I want to do it again. That's the general method. So let's go ahead and add something to both sides. What should I add to make this a perfect square? What do you think? Well, if you said half of 26 squared, you got it. In other words, we're supposed to add 169 to both sides. That's where it comes from, right? Remember that on the right-hand side? So we're going to add 169 to both sides so that the left-hand side can be a perfect square. Okay, that's perfect. So we have now x squared minus 13 squared equals negative x plus 13. Good, good. Now, what do you do with this though? Well, since the left-hand side is a perfect square, I also want, or at least I wish, that the right-hand side were also a perfect square. But it's not because, I mean, it could be, but the problem is it's just linear. I want a quadratic so I can look at the, uh, what is it called? The discriminant, the delta. Right, So we need to add a little bit more, but while keeping the left-hand side a perfect square, I want to turn the right-hand side into a quadratic perfect square. And we can do that by adding 2k multiplied by x squared minus 13 plus k squared, which still makes the left-hand side a perfect square. And on the right-hand side, we're going to have negative x plus 13 plus the 2k times x squared minus 13 and then plus k squared. You got that? Now, what is the left-hand side? I said that it's still a perfect square. Yes, it is. Because now if you look at it carefully, you're going to realize, uh-oh, this is x squared minus 13 plus k quantity squared. Let's go ahead and rearrange the right-hand side. Well, we're going to write the x squared first. So it's going to be 2k x squared. And then we have the minus x. And then we have the 13. And then we have the minus 26k plus k squared. We could also write it in standard form, but that's no big deal. Okay? Now, what do you want? Well, the left-hand side is perfect square, so the right-hand side is also a perfect square. Perfect square means the delta is zero, right? That's what it means. So we're going to look at delta. Delta is negative b. Oops, I mean, delta is b squared minus 4ac. What am I talking about? I just got uh, stuck with the... Uh, what's called the quadratic formula, but this is just part of the quadratic formula, right? So b squared minus 4ac for this equation right here, that'll be, let's see, 1 minus 4 times a, a is 2k, and c is k squared minus 26k plus 13. Okay, I'm going to write it in standard form this time. And we want the delta to be 0 so that this can become a perfect square, right? So we can kind of put everything on the same side and keep the 1 here. So from here, we get 8k times k squared minus 26k plus 13 is equal to 1. And then by distributing 8k cubed, uh oh what is 8 times 26? 
that must be 208, I think, k squared, plus, what is 13 times k? I think that's 104, half of that, obviously, k, and that's equal to 1. If you put everything on the same side, then you should be getting a full cubic, right? Full cubic means uh, if you want to solve it and make it depressed, you can. But I, I'm going to think about something else because k is supposed to be an irrational. I mean, sorry, k is supposed to be rational or integer maybe. So I could probably do the following. 2k quantity cubed. And then I'm going to write this as 2k quantity squared. That's going to give me a 4. 208 divided by 4 is 52. So I'm going to have a 52 here as my coefficient plus... And this will be 52 times 2k, and then minus 1. Now, if you replace 2k with something like maybe n, we get n cubed minus 52n squared plus 52n minus 1 equals 0. And guess what? This is factorable. Isn't that awesome? Beautiful. So we can now go ahead and do the following. We can just pair these two terms up. I think it could be done in a couple different ways, but I'm going to use these two. And I think 1 is a solution, right? Great. So n equals 1 is a solution because as you can see, the sum of the coefficients is 0. So yes, n equals 1 is a solution. To find the other solutions, you can look at the product, you can look at the sums, but I don't think you're going to find another nice solution. n equals 1 implies that 2k equals 1, which means k is equal to 1 half. And that's kind of uh, given because... If you look at this expression carefully, you want 2k to be a perfect square and preferably 1, of course. And if k is 1 half, we're in good shape. Let me show you why. If k is 1 half, we're going to get something like this, right? And the right-hand side is going to be x squared minus x. And this is hopefully 1 fourth because that's how it's perfect square. Well, let's find out. 1 half squared is, let me clear this area so that I can just evaluate it. So let's see. Okay, so this part is 13 minus 26 times 1 half plus 1 fourth. This is 13, yay, I get 1 fourth, which is expected because that's a perfect square. So let's go ahead and erase this as well because we already know the k value, so who cares about this, right? So now we're gonna go ahead, oops, I thought I was erasing everything, right? I was under the impression, but all of a sudden it just like bounces back. Anyways, so this is good. Now let's go ahead and simplify this. This squared is equal to that. Don't forget the square. So now we can write this as x squared minus, and this will become 13 minus 25 over 2 squared. And this will be x minus 1 half squared. Awesome. Now we have two perfect squares. We know what to do, right? Uh, take the absolute value or the square roots and you're going to get two solutions. Like one of them is going to be like this. And the other one is just going to be the opposite of what's on the right hand side. Or either side is fine, but I'm going to use this. And now we can put everything on the same side, multiply by two, and you'll get a nice equation. Okay, for example, this will give you that. And from here we get 2x squared minus 2x minus 24 equals 0. And of course, you can divide everything by 2, and that'll give us the following. And guess what? This could even be like super uh, nice and give us maybe some really cool solutions. How about that? So let's go ahead and find out. Uh, we can factor this into what? 4 and 3, but this is going to be negative. So x equals 4 or x equals negative 3 from here. And you can do the same thing for the other equation. I don't know if it's going to be a nice one, but you can do the same pretty much. And this brings us to the end of the first method because we still have to do the second method, which was intended initially. But you're going to let me know which method you like better, okay? What's the original problem? Square root of 13 minus x is equal to x squared minus 13 or 13 minus x squared. Okay, 13 minus x squared. Here we go. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to set this equal to y, and then that gives us one equation like this. And then we can also set this equal to y by transitive property. This gives us 13 minus x equals y squared, or 13 minus y squared equals x. Or, even better, x plus y squared equals 13. Okay, let's keep that. And this gives us y plus x squared equals 13, which means these two things are equal because they are equal to the same thing, right? 
So we can safely say that x plus y squared equals y plus x squared from here. Of course, we invented y, but don't worry, this is gonna make it easier. And now let's put everything on the same side, y squared minus x squared minus y minus x equals zero. We can factor this using difference of two squares and this can be factored as well. Now y minus x is a common factor and we get y plus x minus one is another factor. This indicates y equals x, but what is y? Y is something we So we get y equals x and what is that supposed to mean? Y is something we invented, so y is 13 minus x squared. So 13 minus x squared equals x and that gives us x squared plus x minus 13 equals zero. And from here, you should find the solutions that we haven't found earlier, negative b plus minus two square root of b squared one minus four ac. That should be a 53, I think, if I'm not mistaken. And the other solution is gonna be even better because we found it with the first method, remember? So let's go ahead and take a look at the graph of these two functions and see the intersection points. Ta-da, there are two intersection points, as you can see. So those should be the same as the ones we found. And, this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. By the way, are we supposed to find four solutions? Anyways, check it out and let me know. Bye-bye.